All righty, folks, we're going to check in with Jonathan from Convoy Home Loans. We're going to hear about the market rates. We're also going to talk about 1031 Exchange, how I have used them, and I plan to use them again. And we will hear about a deal that Jonathan just closed in Columbus, Ohio, for his personal portfolio. Man, you're amazing. What's going on? Hey, so a uh, lot of stuff going on. Obviously, we had a lot of activity this morning, especially. Um, it's crazy because I think this morning, again, the five-year and the 10-year treasury were, was inverse, um, mm -hmm. which it, it, it's kind of like, we've been living in this world now of inverse, you know, 10-year, five-year, three-year, two-year, like it's been, a, it's been a little nuts. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I've been cycling treasury bonds on like one to three month treasury bonds, um, just for my, my spare cash. And mm -hmm. that's been returning like 5%, like 4.8 wow. to 5% on an annual basis. So um, it's kind of crazy to see that happen on one to three month treasuries, you know, because right. uh, typically that's a return on like a 10 year or a seven year. So right. um, that's kind of like the game we've been, we've been in. Uh, but the market itself, obviously rates are up, right? We're still past four on the 10 year treasury. Um, even the five-year treasury. So non-QM rates have, I think, ticked up a little bit. Conventional okay. still edges up. Um, and I don't know if we'll see any like reprieve down in the short term, like we've been talking about for the last year, um, in the near next few months, right? I mean, there's still people hoping that and holding on to the fact that they're like, no, rates are going to drop by, you know, June, July. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really think so. Right. I, I frankly hope not. I mean, I'll just yeah. say that right now. I mean, I think the only way we get to the other side and have a functioning housing market is we got to go through this uncomfortable period where rates are seven. I mm -hmm. think if rates drop to six and a half by June, mm -hmm. that's a problem because we already know what happened. You saw what happened in January when rates were six and a half. It got nutty yep. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's, and it's, there's so it's, much it's demand, fun. right? Still. And um, I think the we've talked about this before, but you there's a lot of demand. Rates come down a little bit. Prices will skyrocket. Investors are going to get pushed out of the communities because people that are investing, they have to hit a target number. Correct. And I was talking to a lot of people at your event, actually, about this. And they were asking about, obviously, forecasting and whatnot. But I said, investors are the ones that are going to suffer because yeah. if primary residence people, they don't care how much extra they go above asking or above what it's worth because they're going to live there and they're putting 5% down or three and a half percent down, whatever they're putting down, they don't care if it goes up and they have to put an extra five or 10 K down yeah. versus, you know, the investor that has to compete with the primary person and get like, Oh, whoa. And get, yeah. and get oh. like, um, yeah, that's weird. Get a, you know, like 20, 25% down, which ends up being even more than yeah. five to 10,000. So, um, that's kind of like, I think, where we will see a lot of uh, disparity as the rates come down. So we definitely, as investors, want rates to be higher. The only competition right now is people that have money. Other mm -hmm. than that, there's no real competition of other buyers in the market right now. So this is the time to, like we've been saying, if you have a great deal, you write a great deal, then mm -hmm. write an aggressive offer and take in what you can. No, I think, I think you know, I vote... I thrive better in a slower market because I'm just disciplined, right? I do the work. I know what a great deal is. I'm not embarrassed to write a disrespectful offer. And in a slow market with rates above 7%, my chances of success, success go up. In a market that becomes untethered, if rates are 6%, the only thing I have is speed. And I hate that game. Mm -hmm. I hate the game of using speed. Um, so again, I hope rates stay above 7 I hope we, you know, get to the summer and shoot. If I could wave a magic wand and have us be there all year, so be it. Um, but that's interesting. Let's let's pivot to 1031 exchange because again, one of the things that I hope I have done, it was a huge part of one rental at a time story that I hope to replicate uh in the near future, is a 1031 exchange. But I actually never thought about how a lender plays in that. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 1031 exchanges, I think, are the probably the best tool and gift to us as an investor, real estate investors, um, that the US tax code has, period, right? And for the listeners that don't know, just taking a 30,000 level for few, it, a 1031 exchange 
is an exchange of an investment property of like kind from one to another. And it allows you to defer the capital gains tax to later, which means that you can roll over any extra equity you made, any extra profit you made and roll it into the next deal without having to pay taxes on it, which is amazing, right? Oh, yeah, um, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, that, that's how that's how these uh, investors are able to build such big portfolios as they go size up, size up, size up. They might from a single family to maybe a duplex, a triplex. And then maybe later on, they're starting to trade for bigger apartments, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how wealth is built. But that 1031 exchange aspect, I'm getting a lot of questions on because I think now people have been sitting on a lot of equity, right? Over the yes. last three years, right? And yeah. even with the market, in the commercial side and, and residential side, if you bought like three, four, five years ago, you're sitting on a chunk of equity that a lot of people just don't know what to do with if, you know, the opportunity comes up. So a tool that I've been kind of coaching people on and, and recommending if it came down to it and they really like obviously holding real estate's the best, best way to build wealth. But if they really want to upgrade and, and expand to a bigger portfolio, then 1031 exchange allows you to do that. And the way that we come in is, hey, uh, before you actually go out and look for a property, I want to make sure that you can actually purchase the property when you do it. Because unless you're going to do a 1031 and buy it straight cash, right, from the full equity amount, you need a loan, right? Mm -hmm. And if you need a loan, you need to talk to someone that knows how to work the 1031 exchange, meet the timelines, because that's the yeah. most important thing. So 1031 exchanges it's 45 days to identify and then 180 days to close, mm -hmm. which is kind of uh, 180 days to close. Not a big deal, but the 45 days to identify is the hard part. I think, Agreed. especially in this market, because Agreed. they like, how are you going to go out and identify when, when there's lack of inventory, how are you going to be able to find something to buy 45 days after you close? So um, what I'm recommending a lot of my clients is if you are wanting to trade up and do a 1031, identify the property maybe first, like a little bit, an idea of where you're going to offer it and start negotiating with the people, letting them know, hey, I have a bunch of money coming from 1031. Mm -hmm. I want to write an offer, write an offer contingent on 1031 or whatever, and be able to do that to be able to kind of build your, your foot in there. That way, mm -hmm. when you sell the other property, it's a seamless 1031 transaction where you've already identified and you, you have time to close because if in the 45 days, if you have to back out, mm. right, you want to be able to back out in that 45 day window because yeah. the headache of getting extensions and whatnot in the, after that 45 days is nuts, right? So the intermediary, who's the person that is the person that takes care of the escrow account for the 1031 Mm -hmm. they're the ones that you have to talk to and coordinate with along with, you know, lenders to make sure that the, the seamless transaction happens between the sale, mm -hmm. get the money and then go towards the next purchase. Yeah. The 1031 is, is like you said, it's, it's magical if you know how to use it, right? We were able to sell eight houses and buy 80 units and we, we paid the IRS nothing, right? It's all delayed. It's all moved to the next, uh, to the next buildings. Uh, I plan to do that again. And one of the things I've been very clear about is over the last couple of years, I've been buying residential because I expect residential to see outsized returns. Lo and behold, we have seen that. Uh, we, you and I both know there's a lot of pain starting in the commercial area. Uh, a lot of the headlines are the big buildings, but I would argue that there's just as much pain in the smaller buildings, the fives to 40 units. And I look forward to the opportunity to pick up more apartment buildings by simply 1030 wanting a house. Think about it. A year and a half from now, rates are five and a half percent. Houses are probably up. I mean, let's assume the houses are flat, which they won't be, but let's assume they're flat. You're sitting on a bunch of equity from the last four years. You'd sell the house, plenty of buyers. You 1031 into an apartment that's distressed at 65 cents on the dollar. That's how you make big moves. What I see coming is monopoly. I'm going to sell four red, four green houses and buy one red hotel. That is coming. And I've, I've been screaming it from the mountaintop for a couple of years and it's right around the corner. So uh, I look forward to it. And yeah, you got to get your lender involved uh, because again, you got to make sure you can get it done. Um, yeah, I, I think that's great advice. Yeah. And um, the, the other thing too is obviously on a 1031 
the biggest thing is people try to move like, Hey, if I buy it, if I owned it in this name, can I move it to this name? It's like, you can't really, right. You have to, it has to be same vesting to same vesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously that's why if you know, you're going to 1031 in the future and you know that this is what you want to do, and this is an asset that you're going to hold. And if you find a new opportunity, you're going to get out to then buy it initially in an entity, you know, using a non QM loan, even if it is a little more expensive, a little higher rate, it might be worth it for you in the long run, because you get to then keep moving it with the entity instead of in your personal name. Right. Because I think that's the biggest uh, mistake that a lot of people make is they, they only see the short term of, Oh, my rate is a quarter or a half percent less going conventional. So they can't see the fact that if they go, Oh, but if I'm looking for 10 years down the line, how is this actually going to affect me, right? Because at the end of the day, for investment properties, the rate is just the write-off. You write off yeah. mortgage interest. Right. That's it, right? So are, are you really concerned about the rate? Or are you really concerned about the cash flow that you're trying to hit in between mm-hmm. the actual rent that you're receiving and the payment that you're making? So mm-hmm. that's kind of like the, the biggest thing. So again, not trying to push anyone towards non no. or conventional, but if your idea is to 1031 and utilize that in the future, it might be helpful for you to have it in a company first and then, you know, be able to do that in the future so that you have that history. I like it. I like it. Well, let's switch gears. Totally. Let's catch us up on your triplex that you're working on in Koreatown, which I think we talked about about a year ago. And then let's talk about your purchase in Columbus, Ohio. Look at you going out of state. Yeah. So um, the Koreatown one uh, just fully occupied. That's the only way to cash flow, but yeah, I rented out per room. So um, for a reminder, it was, it's a back ADU single standing of junior ADU and then eight bedroom, eight bath inside the house. So Jeez, been, eight bedroom, yeah. eight bath. Oh my God. Yeah. It's wow. 9,000 square foot lot in, in the heart of Koreatown. So it was a, it was a steel buy. And for listeners, I, I bought it for like one six. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it was, it's the appraisal came back as is where it was like totally torn down, broken apart. Um, no one had touched it for 40 years, basically. Uh, and it came back at one nine. And then we put the money into it. Now it's probably two, two, three, two, four around that area. Okay. Um, but so obviously we did that. That was an aggressive purchase in there. Creatively structured the deal, got a first um, and then got a second trustee behind it and only put mm-hmm. 15% down to buy the property. Was the so, second the seller or someone else? The second was a seller, yeah. Yeah, so I worked sellers, with the seller second. Yeah. And then got that it first. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I so, love those deals, especially in properties yeah. that need work. Get get a seller to chip in. Uh exactly. did you uh did you pay interest month to month or did you get like a year delay or what did that look no, like? No, I, I paid I started paying interest month to okay, month. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we we put so little down and it was the only mm. way to kind of um make it make the deal work favorably sure. for them at least to make the payments. Like so yeah, it's always just structuring, right? And I bought it with already like 20% equity in it. So, you know, it was, it kind of worked out. Um, but then this new deal that obviously we spoke, I think like a month ago, almost we were like, hey, what, where am I going to buy yeah. and looking? And I was like, well, I might be looking in Orange County, might be looking in LA, wherever the opportunity is, right? And that's kind of like right. where investors should think, like they should always think, where's the opportunity, right? Obviously Columbus, Ohio is kind of, it's booming, right? I, and i kind of sad I, i'm catching on i'm buying it now versus like you know five years ago um mm-hmm. but we bought a single family residence um and for one hundred sixty thousand, and the cash flow the monthly rents are like 2500 wow so, more than the one yeah. percent rule as they say yeah yeah so um and it was listed for 189 so 190 right so we got a little bit of discount on the purchase price um appraisal came in at 190 Hmm. okay you know rents are strong so put 20 but actually i put 20 percent down and bought it with a dscr on that one okay yeah so it it's kind of like with a one-year prepay which Mm. just because i want the flexibility right but like you know i'm i'm going out there i picked columbus because i was like i i want to find a like a cash heavy cash flowing state that was the only place that I could really find that without being too in the under a hundred thousand dollar range, because right. I try to stay above one twenty mm-hmm. and up because right. the options are really slim yeah. under a hundred. Lend- lending gets to be a problem. Yeah. 
and there's so much work that needs to be done right on the yeah. smaller properties because they're typically like uh not as well taken care of unfortunately of yeah so no, just reality. um yeah. yeah yeah i mean so we so we the, the, c c couple of questions for you uh yeah. a do you have any history or relationships in colombo columbus excuse me columbus ohio or is this just uh math so it's funny because i i bought it with a couple they were clients they turned friends and then you know we're trying to start playing monopoly out in mm. ohio so okay. um they have they already have like a whole portfolio there property management companies all that's that. that's the key because one of that's the things the that scares me about out of state yeah. people talk yeah. about lenders this that the other if you don't have a somebody that's already a proven success I would be screaming at you right now. Like, what yeah. the hell are you doing? You're wasting money. You're gambling. Stop it. But because you've tapped into somebody who's already been there, done that, probably skinned their knee a couple of times, and it's working, your chances of success go up a thousandfold. So I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. And and obviously, I being in the business and doing loans in all these states, right? We have connects everywhere. So of course. Um we have it was it was kind of a good opportunity to tap into the connects that I had with the relationships and kind of build it further. Eventually, I'll have to go out there. I didn't actually right. see it. I saw everything <laughs> through an inspection report and an appraisal. Um, but as we get more, you didn't get any FaceTime videos. I uh, FaceTime videos. Uh, no, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But oh, um, Jonathan. So it's a it's a little risky there. But I know everything. Um, in terms of like the. Yeah. property management people and the appraisal and the inspection report i read all that in pretty big okay. detail so nice. it's it seemed pretty low risk very well managed um was so you just just closed before. on it like literally this week or last week all right so uh End maybe we'll check week. in in a couple of months and see how it's going yeah 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 maybe uh there's a pipe bursting and i'm gonna have to fly yeah. out to ohio <laughs> frozen pipes baby you, you yeah, gotta remember exactly. dude ohio's got snow we you don't have that in orange it's county crazy yeah yeah exactly but um, yeah, I mean, you have to, everyone just has to keep looking for the deals, right? Yeah. Can't be tied, married to one area. I thought I was going to live, you know, buy in Koreatown forever, but it just, it, it's not worth it right now. Yeah. Eventually it will be, but there's a lot of development happening here now. So I don't know. We'll see a lot of, a uh, lot of gentrification happening in the areas surrounding this place. So Very I think, cool. you know, yeah. Very cool. Well, if somebody yeah. wanted to reach out, see what's what, maybe get a quote on a loan to see what's what, uh, how do they do that? Go to convoyhomeloans.com and let us know you came from ORAT. Folks, you got to tell them you came from ORAT. So you get this young man, Jonathan, or his partner, Dustin. If you don't, you're going to be put in the queue and you don't want to be in the queue. Thanks, guys.